Uzbekistan. Officially known as the Republic of Uzbekistan, it is one of the prime countries in Central Asia. The country covers a vast land area of precisely 447,000 square kilometers, making it quite expansive in this regard. However, due to desert sand mountains dotting its landscape, not every part of the country is suitable for human habitation. Approximately 35 million people call this extensive land homemaking it the most populous country in Central Asia. As you might expect, the capital city Tashkent is the most popular city in Uzbekistan and often serves as the initial destination for visitors. Tashkent, especially during the Soviet Union era, held significant importance as a trading hub. In fact, it was the second most populous Soviet city after Moscow and St. Petersburg. Today, Tashkent is home to approximately 3 million residents. Uzbekistan lacks any coastline along the seas, having only lakes and rivers within its borders. Among these, the Aral Sea stands out. It used to be one of the world's largest lakes referred to as a sea at one point, but it has since shrunk unfortunately, becoming a shadow of its former self. Moreover, Uzbekistan is truly a gold-rich country, and I'm not speaking metaphorically. It is the fourth largest gold producer globally. They extract gold from their mines, and alongside gold, the region boasts various underground treasures, including uranium. Uzbekistan's terrain is so fertile that it ranks fifth in cotton production worldwide. Additionally, the country possesses natural resources like natural gas, oil, and coal. If we take a look at the history of Uzbekistan, it was once the most popular living center in Central Asia. It was a trading point that merchants considered a center between China and Europe. In a Silk Road center where trade took place, cultural interactions were also quite common. The fact that Uzbekistan's lands became so rich and prominent attracted the attention of great rulers, such as Alexander the Great and Genghis Khan. Especially the Mongols deeply plundered and destroyed Uzbekistan throughout the historical process. After Genghis Khan, the great ruler Timur dominated the lands of Uzbekistan. Emir Timur loved art and culture. For this reason, he brought scholars and philosophers from many parts of the world to Samarkand and ensured the development of the culture here. Today, Uzbekistan is a fully independent country. In 1991, following the dissolution of the Soviet Union, it proclaimed its sovereignty. In this regard, the people of Uzbekistan take pride in their own culture and history. Apart from the capital Tashkent, the country is home to other popular settlements like Bukhara and Samarkand. Situated in Central Asia, Uzbekistan shares borders with Afghanistan and Turkmenistan to the south, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan to the east, and Kazakhstan to the north. If you plan to visit the country for tourism, most nationalities can enter Uzbekistan without encountering visa issues. However, if you intend to stay for an extended period or work there, you'll need to obtain a residence permit and a work permit. To live in Uzbekistan, it's essential to learn the official language Uzbek. Uzbek and Russian are the two widely spoken languages in the country. Furthermore, over 90% of the population adheres to Islam. Therefore, we can characterize Uzbekistan as a Central Asian state that has embraced Islam. Uzbekistan is a sufficiently modern country where people enjoy freedom in matters of clothing and belief. Therefore, Uzbekistan is more inclined towards the culture of societies like Kazakhstan and Russia. It doesn't revolve around Arab culture. Due to its proximity to places like Afghanistan, it might be perceived as unsafe, but that's not the case. Uzbekistan is one of the most livable countries among the Central Asian nations. If you can earn American dollars here, you could practically establish your own kingdom in Uzbekistan. 
When you exchange even $100 in Uzbekistan, you'll receive stacks of Uzbek sums. The first things that will catch your attention when you visit Uzbekistan are its bazaars, markets, and bread. There are many bakeries at various points where people are enthusiastically making bread. In Uzbekistan, you can find different types of bread with unique flavors that you might not have tasted before. The good thing is, you can easily buy these beautiful breads for about $1 each. Yes bread is really cheap in Uzbekistan. Since the country's food culture is mainly centered around meat, getting meat here is also extremely affordable. For example, you can enjoy a high-quality shish kebab for $3. What's also nice at the markets is that as soon as the vendors make eye contact with you, they offer you free samples of their products. This is actually a wonderful thing because it shows that people have confidence in the quality of what they are selling. So they aim to attract customers by offering these samples. Uzbek people are known for their hospitality and friendly nature. The marketplaces, both in terms of size and the appearance of the stalls, closely resemble those in Mongolia. While strolling through the bazaars, you'll notice people's eyes shining, and they genuinely smile at you. When you look at the Uzbek people, you can see the sparkle in their eyes. Unfortunately, there's a bad side of the story. Some individuals who realize you're a tourist and not familiar with Uzbekistan might try to scam you. Of course, it's not fair to attribute this to Uzbekistan. You can encounter cunning individuals almost everywhere in the world. For instance, they might charge you three times the regular price for a taxi. Or in places like Bukhara and Samarkand, where museums are free, people can pose as officials at the entrances and demand an entrance fee. Or in souvenir shops, they can tell you prices that are much higher than they should be. It's like they're playing tricks with your mind. Therefore, it's advisable to always stay alert. My recommendation is that when you visit a country, make sure to meet a local guide from that culture before you go and explore the country together. This way, with a local person by your side, there's no chance for people to take advantage of you. On the other hand, when you go to Uzbekistan today, no matter what your nationality or ethnic identity is, when they realize you're a tourist, they approach you with great joy and a friendly attitude. They are happy because people from all around the world come to see their country. Especially if you visit rural areas, local families will definitely want to host you, feed you, and make you feel at home. Their cuisine also boasts a unique specialty, which is meat dishes served with rice. One thing that resembles us in Uzbekistan is that people there drink tea from morning till night, my friends. However, they consume not only black tea, but also green tea abundantly. Additionally, they like to combine these teas with lemon or other flavors. By the way, let's not forget that horse meat and kumis are also widely used in Uzbekistan. If you happen to be a guest at someone's home in Uzbekistan, especially if they live in an apartment, you should definitely take off your shoes at the entrance. Especially if you go to the capital, Tashkent, and speak Russian fluently. You can quickly make friends and get close to the locales. Someone who speaks Russian can smoothly integrate into Uzbek society. But there's one issue related to the climate. I would advise anyone planning to visit Uzbekistan in the middle of summer to think twice. Because cities like Tashkent, Bukhara, and Samarkand become incredibly hot and humid. People are exposed to temperatures exceeding 50 degrees Celsius. In a place with such scorching temperatures, you have the chance to enjoy a variety of nuts and fruits at very reasonable prices. If you love architecture and taking photographs, the heat might not matter much to you because Uzbekistan's historical heritage, shaped by the Silk Road, attracts people and makes it the tourism hub of Central Asia. In the evenings, life in cities like Tashkent and Samarkand in Uzbekistan doesn't come to a halt. In these three cities, you can find many establishments promising you entertainment and delicious meals in the evenings. 
For example, while dining at a restaurant, you might suddenly see Uzbek dancers performing their unique dances in the square. Central Asian dances are truly graceful, and the dancers glide on stage like swans. Not only their dances, but also the traditional costumes they wear sparkle brightly. There are no restrictions on alcohol in Uzbekistan either. In the evenings, at a place you visit, you can consume alcohol like vodka or whiskey as you wish and enjoy pleasant times according to your idea of entertainment. You can also crank up the fun in nightclubs. Because people in Uzbekistan enjoy having fun and nightclubs, especially on weekends, are packed to the brim. The capital Tashkent experienced a devastating earthquake in 1966 with a magnitude of 8 and the people there still bear the pain of that earthquake. To give you an idea, in that earthquake, more than 36,000 buildings were destroyed, leaving over 300,000 people homeless. The earthquake was so powerful that even the aftershocks that followed the main earthquake measured 7 in magnitude. During that time, the people of Tashkent described living in this city as living on the back of an angry camel. Subsequently, Tashkent was rebuilt receiving substantial aid from the Soviet Union. The city even got a metro system, and it transformed into a more beautiful, modern structure than before. Houses in Tashkent are mostly three, five stories high, not excessively tall. Many of them were built after the 1966 earthquake. These houses are typically comprised of minimal apartments. We're talking about two-room apartments with one living room and one bedroom measuring around 60-70 square meters. When you leave the markets and venture onto the streets, you'll notice another detail. You see that almost every vehicle on Uzbekistan's roads and streets is a Chevrolet brand, from Americans, has become almost a monopoly in Uzbekistan. The reason behind this is Uzbekistan's policy of collaborating with Chevrolet to produce more affordable vehicles for its people. Chevrolet vehicles flood the streets of Uzbekistan. Furthermore, a significant part of Uzbekistan's territory is surrounded by mountains and hotlands resembling deserts. Much of the population lives in rural areas. In rural regions, you can see people engaging in sports like horseback riding and equestrianism, trying to preserve every bit of culture passed down from their ancestors. Especially in rural areas, people regularly consume meat. They have numerous traditional dishes containing meat, including horse meat. They often mix meat with rice and even use the fat from meat in their bread. Among the most famous dishes regularly prepared in rural areas is, of course, Uzbek pilaf. This pilaf is no ordinary dish. It includes not only lamb, but also ingredients like peas, dried grapes, and garlic. In addition to their cuisine, Uzbek people have a renowned tradition of carpet making. Handcrafted carpets made in Uzbekistan find buyers from various parts of the world. Uzbeks produce these carpets with great craftsmanship and sell them to foreign tourists at very reasonable prices in exchange for dollars. If you're in love with historical architecture, you must visit the city of Kiva in Uzbekistan. This city has been meticulously preserved since the 6th century. What makes Kaiva so attractive is the absence of modern buildings. There are hardly any modern structures in the city. Many craftsmen in the city produce goods that match Kiva's historical charm. In general, Uzbekistan is one of the most livable countries among the Central Asian states. You can find many things you'd expect from a country, except for a coastline and above all, you'll find sincerity. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.